Hi, this is David Smith. We're here with No Kill in Motion today. Uh, we're joined by Aubrey Kavanaugh, author of It's Not Rocket Science and leader of No Kill Huntsville. Also, Alan Rosenberg of New Jersey Animal Observer and statistician analyst for an, uh, No Kill Movement. I'm David Smith, president of No Kill Colorado. We have an interesting subject today, um, and it's about the future of shelter intake. There was an article recently, The Future is Here, 10 Steps Shelters Can Take Now to Build Better Animal Services, written by Kristen Hassan Auerbach. And it was a great article. They do have 10 steps. We don't have time to cover them all. So I wanted to bring up the first one that they have on there, which says, reserve intake for only pets who truly and urgently need to be sheltered. Starting today, I'd like to ask Aubrey what she thinks about this. I know that, Aubrey, we've talked in the past a lot about managed intake, and I think this relates to this. This is a very aggressive look at managed intake. Well, you know, what's your, what's your view on the way that they're looking at this? Well, I think all of us support managed intake from the standpoint of trying to reduce the number of animals that enter a shelter. And when we historically have talked about managed intake, we've related it to owned animals. Most animal shelters are not obligated to take owned animals. I mean, a lot of them do because they're trying to help, but if I have an animal that I decide that I can't keep anymore, let's say I have cancer and I have no family members who can help my animal, nobody else will take it. Um, and I approach my local animal shelter and say, this is my dog, but can you take my dog? Um, because I want him to be safe and find a new home. Um, animal shelters are not obligated to take those animals. And to the extent that we make that process too easy for people, it simply can perpetuate a cycle of surrender, acquire, and surrender. So I'm all about managed intake related to own animals. Let's have a conversation with people um, in terms of pet retention programs, which are part of the no-kill equation, to try to keep animals in existing homes um, and, and just have the shelter as a last resort. I think what I see with this discussion about what sheltering is gonna look like in the future is having more of a focus on animals found running at large, not entering the shelter. And um, there's some good in that and some bad in that. Um, in the area where I um, live and work, the animal shelter is encouraging people that find animals running at large. They're asking them if they can please foster those animals so that those animals don't physically go to the shelter. The animals become part of the shelter intake through information about where the animal was found, a description, photographs, but to the extent people can foster, they're trying to get people to foster. And that's great when a lot of people are working from home, but I'm concerned that once more people go back to work, um, they're not gonna be able to foster as readily Monday through Sunday. Um, they may be able to do sleepover fosters or weekend fosters, but I think fewer people are going to be um, in a position where they can foster for weeks at a time because they can supervise that lost animal. So I think we've gotta be careful to not put too much focus on the public housing all these animals that are running at large. And one final note, because I'm in Alabama, we actually have a state law that says that shelters, we call them pounds under the law, that they exist for the purpose of impounding animals found running at large. And the law specifically talks about dogs and cats and ferrets. Now it doesn't talk about other species, but in Alabama, it could be argued that if animals are running at large, that municipal shelters by law are obligated to take those animals in. Now, I guess we could have a conversation about what impoundment means. Um, does the animal physically have to come to the building or just be in the system? So there are some legal issues at play here. That's really interesting that you have that in Alabama. I don't know if that's everywhere. So Alan, what's your view on this uh, kind of aggressive look at intake and, and managed intake? And also the fact that I, I, I don't think in New Jersey, you probably have the same laws. And with the increase of fosters that we have been seeing statistically, um, I, I wanna see where you come in on this. Well, on, on the foster side, I think um, I'm a little more bullish uh, to use a stock market analogy. Um, I, I think we've seen good, good trends before the crisis of people fostering more animals. You're seeing, you saw it uh, clearly in places like Pima Animal Care, Kansas City, a Casey Pet Project, mm -hmm. and in uh, Austin. So I, I think that trend can continue. So uh, I, I am bullish on shelters taking in animals and finding foster homes that that I'm that I'm positive about on the restricting intake side I am very skeptical to be honest with you um, 
you know, in my state, we have a few shelters in recent years that radically increased their live release rates by drastically reducing intake. And by and large, uh, the rescue community in particular, but also the public as well, have not been happy with these shelters. They feel like the shelters haven't um, done their due diligence, their, due, their duties to um, take care of these animals. And they feel there's problems with animals on the streets and things like that. Um, so I understand that, you know, the model that's being developed uh, by uh, uh, Kristen, Kristen Auerbach and others is going to uh, develop a whole bunch of social service type programs to help people who are going to house these animals instead of the shelter impounding them. But uh, I am skeptical that um, the public is going to be um, willing to do that. Well, you know, the the fact that you know they're putting the onus on the public we have said for a long time and the no kill movement has said for a long time that the shelters have to be more trusting of the public and actually urge them to help which i think we've seen uh but as as you said aubrey you know uh, some of this is because a lot of us are home uh which makes it easier so what what do you think will actually happen if we go back to let's say the word normal is kind of an interesting word to use here. Um, if we go back to normal, are we actually gonna lose those fosters or just a, a certain amount of those fosters or have we actually um, increased the ability to actually keep animals out of the shelter because of the foster numbers? What do you think? Um, I, I'm sorry, I, go ahead, Alan. I was a, this a question for Aubrey or for me? Go ahead, Alan. Okay, sorry, Aubrey. Um, I was just going to say is, you know, we're going to get into the data, I think, a little bit later, um, but the data is important. Um, so the data has shown that fostering for dogs is up about 15 to 20 percent since the crisis started versus the same period last year. But on the cat side, fostering is actually down. But um, so I don't, you know, I but I do, I am bullish that um, people will foster more animals in the future because I think overall, the trends in recent years have been uh, showing more and more fostering. But the question really will be is, um, you know, if there's an abrupt, you know, I think there's a difference between people fostering animals and then people finding animals and being told that they have to keep the animals and, and find a home for the animal. So I think there's a little bit of a distinction there as opposed to like a shelter based foster program. But I think in general, fostering should be growing in the future. I don't know, though, it would be it'll grow fast enough if shelters just say immediately everyone has to foster animals now. All right, good point. Uh, so, Aub Aubrey, um, I think last thoughts here. We're getting close to the end. What do you think of the, the, the foster question? I think that we've heard a lot in recent years that fostering is the future of animal sheltering, and I believe that. I mean, to the extent that the public can be involved to keep animals out of a building that causes them stress, even under the best of circumstances, I think that that's the future. I think what we're gonna find is, and I'm just speculating here, I think that this crisis has caused an awakening with the American public related to the need of shelter and rescue animals that we have not seen in our history. So to the extent that people, extent that people have been made aware of the need of shelter animals for help, um, I think we've got more people at the table than we ever had before. I think it's unlikely that people that are working at home now who maybe have fostered a dog or a couple of dogs while they've been home will continue to do it in the, at the same level. But we've shown them that fostering is an easy, uncomplicated way to learn about an animal's personality. You know, do they get along with other animals? Do they get along with children? Do dogs get along with cats? And we've shown them it's not complicated and that there's a lot of reward to having helped an animal for a short period of time and helped that animal get into a great new home. So I think that we're gonna keep a lot of those people who have become engaged during what we'll call this awakening period. I think that they probably won't do it as much in the future as they are right now once they go back to work. But they, so they can do sleepovers, they can do you know fosters on a holiday weekend. We've got the Memorial Day weekend coming up. So even if people are back at work, maybe they could do a three day foster on a holiday weekend or even just a weekend foster. So I think we brought more people to the table and that is gonna help um, regardless of how the animal was found, keeping those animals out of the shelter building themselves and helping to market them to fast track them into new homes. That's great. Okay, so um, I want to thank you both for being here today. Uh, for folks who actually um, 
checked in today, please look below and comment uh, if you have any opinion about managed intake and this new look. We look forward to seeing you next time. This has been No Killing Motion. Thank you, everybody.